number 16 then from the 2015 Advanced Higher Maths, a 10 mark second order differential equation. Well, it all just depends what pops out of this, if it's anything that clashes with that, or if it's sines and cosines, because they can be a real pest when it comes to the evaluation, because you get so many numbers. Well, what have we got? First bit anyway would be, let's form the auxiliary equation. So if you take the homogeneous part, we would have m squared plus 2m, if you wish to call it that, plus 10 equals 0. That's bad news straight away, there's a negative discriminant, that's not going to factorise. Not with a, might, a plus 10 to come away from just a 4. So, it's going to have to be m equals negative b plus or minus the square root of all over 2, and that will be 4 minus 40. So 4 minus 40 is negative 36. The square root of that would be 6i. So you've got negative 2 plus or minus 6i over 2. I'm taking up a lot of room here. An awful lot of room here. So negative 1 plus or minus 3i. Which means that your complementary function is going to be y equals the trig thing, unfortunately, e to the negative x times a lots of cos 3x plus b lots of sin 3x. Now what about a particular integral? A particular integral. What might satisfy this then? I know that gets in for free because that will produce an answer of zero. A, well it doesn't clash at least. So y equals something, c would do, e to the 2x. So that means the first derivative, dy by dx, or just y dash, takes up less room, doesn't it? It's just going to be what it is, only multiply by 2, so 2c e to the 2x. And the second derivative is going to be multiply by 2 again, 4c e to the 2x. So feeding that back into that then, feeding it back into 1, maybe we'll just call that 1. So into 1 is going to give you just one of them, 4c e to the 2x plus 2 of these, plus 4c e to the 2x, plus 10 of them, plus 10c e to the 2x. And that lot should equal 3e to the 2x. Well, e to the 2x can all go, because the coefficients, or just compare the coefficients if you want. 4 and 4 and 10, that's 18. So you've got 18c is equal to 3, so c is a sixth. Ah, we're getting into fractions, okay. Which means the particular integral is going to be y equals one sixth of e to the two x. Let's just put that in there. That was the complementary function. That was the particular integral. Now you just got to stick them together for the general solution. But we need to go up there. Push that up there. Then that's the general solution. Now we need the particular solution. When what have they got? X is zero y is 1, is one of the initial conditions, so we can put that in and see what happens. Now that means they're all going to turn into 1s and zeros, but I'll put it in anyway. x is 0, so that'll be a nothing. That'll be a 0. Cos 0. Sine 0. 1 sixth of e to the 0. So, that's a 1. That's a 1, so it leaves the a. That's a 0. And that's a 1, so that leaves a sixth. So I've got a is equal to 1 take away a sixth, which means a equals 5 sixths. So I can put it back in now. e to the negative x times 5 sixths of cos 3x. I don't know what b is yet. Plus b sine 3x plus 1 sixth of e to the 2x. What was the other condition? The derivative. That's just what you don't want with this big product. Hey, right, to differentiate, I probably need a lot more room. So do y by dx will be, so here's the product, this one. That will be negative e to the negative x, because the inner derivative's got a negative one. Leave this one alone though, so 5 sixths of cos 3x, and I don't know what b is yet, b sine 3x. Now leave that alone. 
e to the negative x, and differentiate this. Now this is what becomes a bit more of a problem. So cos is going to go to negative sine, so it'll be negative, and also multiply by the 3, which will make that a 5 upon 2 sine 3x. This one will go to cos, but stay positive, and it'll be 3b cos 3x, just making it, and then finally that would be 2 times that's 1 third, a third of e to the 2x. Now, we had x is 0, and the derivative is 0. We'll put it in. Maybe this time I'll just go for those zeros and the 1s then. So that is 0. Negative e to the 0 will be negative 1. Cos of 0 is 1, so that will be 5 sixths. Sine of 0 is 0, so that will be 0. Plus e to the 0 is 1. Sine 0 is 0. Plus cos of 0 is 1, so that's 3b. And e to the 0 is 1, so it's plus a third. So if I keep my 3b, but I'll put it over here. Now if I keep 3b and move the other things over the other side, that'll become plus 5 sixths, but minus a third. So that's going to be 5 bits, take away 2 is 3 bits, that's going to be a half. Which means that when you divide by 3, b is also a sixth. There's another sixth. Is a sixth, is a sixth. Now put it all together. So here we are. Y equals ah, e to the negative x times a was 5 sixths of cos 3x, b was 1 sixth of sine 3x, and we already had 1 sixth of e to the 2x. You could take the sixth out of them all, but that would involve another bracket around the whole lot. But you could take that sixth out of here, couldn't you? You could take that sixth out and make it a sixth of that, and just leave it as a nice five plus sine three x. That would be a little bit neater. There we go. I think there's just so much arithmetic in that. There's plenty of scope for a wee mistake somewhere. <laughs>